Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first unit in English Literature and Language. I would like to start off by stating that every journey has a special idea that guides us. Our big idea for this unit is connections. It's like a treasure map that will help us discover all sorts of exciting knowledge and secrets among when you connect the different ideas, concepts, and contexts with one another when creating your own piece of writing, which is going to be a personal narrative for this unit. To begin with, I would like to introduce the title of the unit, which is Childhood Experiences. And we can relate that the unit will primarily focus on um, diverse experience that ch uh, children go through and how they can develop throughout this experience, which leads me to the key concept, related concepts and global context of the unit. As you all know by now, each and every unit focuses on a key concept, which is the main idea, the related concepts that guide us a little bit more into the global context, relating it to real life situations. And for this unit, unit one, uh, the key concept is connections. So we're going to connect perhaps experiences um, to our own experience, um, and or we can relate or connect, let's say, the the texts that we read to people we know maybe their experience the related concepts are character and settings uh, sometimes we can relate in different time and place or we can relate with different characters and connect with them the global context and on the other hand includes uh, identities and relationships uh, personal efficiency and agency and when you think about them, when you inter when you relate them to one another, you can see a clear connection between them. When you look at a different perspective, you can deduce perhaps that connections characters make in different settings, formulate identities and relationships, or our identities are created by connecting with other characters in diverse settings. So when you look at it, there's more than one way to interpret what they mean or how the key concept, related concept, and global context are related. However, our SOI, a statement of inquiry, indicates this relationship in depth um, in the sense that they connect the key concept, related concepts, and global context together. And it states over here that the identity of a character may be influenced by connections we make within the context of our setting. So in other words, the character's identity may develop or change or remain the same you never know by influence but and but by creating connections perhaps their connections um formulated new identities or the relationship with diverse people in different settings impacted their perception and identity we make within the context of our setting which i've just stated where the time and space may also play a significant role in the uh, character's identity and the connections that the character makes uh, within a different setting. Before I move to the factual, conceptual, and debatable questions, I would like to highlight the importance of the statement of inquiry because it guides you learners into the inquiry-based learning, which are right in front of you, the factual, conceptual, and debatable. In addition, it encourages, encourages you all to think critically and connect between them in relations to the uh, real world context. And when you explore the SOI, you tend to have a deeper understanding of the concepts and how they're related to one another, which gives you a clear perspective of what to expect when you're assessed. And this goes back to the concept that the key the these a statement of inquiry is very essential it helps you learners to use the possible questions that you may find in the assessment i would like to indicate the uh inquiry based questions that are based upon this unit which include factual conceptual and debatable we start off with the factual which highlight directly contextual uh, meaning in terms of the context itself, you'll find the answers there 
and it is directly related to the text where you can just easily open the book and define and find the words to define them. For example, what is a nonfiction narrative or define nonfiction narrative? What past experiences or challenges can you name that impacted your past, your present day? So you can list them here. For instance, um, I bought a pet. This is a past experience, not necessarily a challenge, but had a pres had an impact uh, on me currently. How can com uh, com comparisons between literary figures demonstrate commonalities? So directly, you need to indicate here, how can they buy stating briefly they can do one, two, and three. So in other words, as you can see, the factual are direct and straight to the point. Whereas conceptual, how are your past experiences connected to your present mindset? Here, you'd have to elaborate a little bit more in depth, indicating uh, how past experience uh, affected your perception. How would uh, how would the context of setting affect the identity of a, char of a character? You'd need to elaborate. Uh, does setting play a significant role? On the identity of a character, um, could culture play a significant role in the way they perceive and understand their surroundings? How does this necessarily have an impact on the character, etc.? So when you look at these questions, you need to divide them into smaller, let's say, components in order to answer them in depth, which indicates that conceptual has 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 to do directly with your understanding of the unit itself and of the main idea of the unit in order to answer them effectively. When do leaders become allies, friends, or enemies? You need to explain when can a leader become an ally or a friend or an enemy in depth here by providing examples and explanations, uh, preferably through your own experience, uh, through your own experience in life in order to relate it to a real life situation. Which finally leads us to the debatable question, to what extent can a negative learning experience become a learning vehicle? Here, it's a question that does not necessarily uh, indicate whether you, you should agree or disagree. The deba debatable question allows you to express your perspective freely, where you can easily disagree and say uh, a negative exp learning experience cannot become a learning vehicle. Um, and you need to pr provide examples and explanations to back up your claim. And this will be done through a debatable class at the end of the unit to ensure that everyone understands the primary concept context of this unit itself. Which leads me to discuss to the assessment criteria. As I've mentioned prior, this unit indicates that you will write a non-fictional or nonfiction narrative reflecting an experience and how it had an impact on your identity and your character and how you can connect with it to your current time and place. So this assessment will be assessed on criterion uh, B, criterion C, and criterion D. Each and every criterion stands for a specific thing, an objective. In the first, in the first criterion, which is criterion B, organize, organizing, includes the following two strands. You'd need to employ organizational structure that serves the context and intention. So when you're writing a personal narrative, you need to apply to a specific structure and um, reflect your message effectively. You need to organize opinions and ideas in a logical and a logical manner. Uh, by ensuring that the personal narrative is cohesive and coherent, the ideas build up on each other effectively. You may reflect an event, uh, provide solutions, a lesson learned, etc. And this will be discussed in details. You will receive a, a outline of a personal or a, a personal narrative and a non-fictional narrative throughout um, throughout the unit. And uh, for objective C, which is producing text, it includes the following strands to produce text that demonstrate uh, thought and imagination while exploring new perspectives and ideas arising from personal engagement with the creative process. In other words, uh, when you look at it, 
in general in terms of uh, texts in English. You may write stories or essays or other types of writing that come from your own idea. So when I ask you to write a personal narrative, it is reflective to your own idea and your own experience. Um, in addition, it highlights your creativity, uh, imagination, and how you lead your writing in the sense that how do you want it to go? Do you want to reflect a, pos a positive experience or a negative? The second strand includes make stylistic choices in terms of linguistic, literary, and visual devices demonstrating awareness of impact on the audience. Uh, in other words, it asks you here to choose how you want to write your words and sentences, use special language tricks like uh, comparing things of, or using clever words to make your writing more interesting. We will delve in depth uh, here in terms of literary devices that you may use uh, when writing a personal narrative to ensure that is engaging uh, for the person heeding or reading your, your text. And finally, you need to select relevant details uh, to support your ideas. To elaborate, you must pick specific things to talk about that help explain your idea. You have you must use examples that make your writing stronger and clearer. Um, through examples, uh, the reader could easily connect with your experience. Or in simpler terms, um, probably reflect whether they've been through this experience or not. And finally, Jesus to criterion D, using language. Obviously, you will acquire a new diction throughout the unit that is reflective to the unit itself, terms that you must apply in your personal narrative uh, to ensure that the text is rich with vocabulary words. Uh, you must ensure that you write and speak in an appropriate register and style. Your writing should be formal, and your style should be consistent. Mm -hmm. You must use correct grammar, syntax, and punctuation. The grammar is correct. Experience in the past should be obviously in the past tense. If you're reflecting something currently, then it should be in the present tense. And if you're, you want to elaborate on something that you should be cautious on in the future or cautious of in the future, it will be in the future. Um. Secondly, syntax highlights how you divide your sentences, uh, subject, verb, and object. And if you're willing to, you, you must use the, uh, different sentence structures, uh, compound, complex, and simple. Uh, I don't want to see um, only simple sentences. Your writing should be if uh, should be attractive to the person reading it, and you should abide, you should use diverse uh, sentence structures. Your, the use of punctuation should be effective. Again, this is a formal type of writing. Therefore, it is not freestyle. You must use the appropriate uh, punctuation marks, comma, full stop, apostrophes, quotation marks, and so on. You must spell and write and pronounce with accuracy. Your writing should be accurate. Your spelling of the word should be accurate or else it will be considered as an error. And as you move to the, down the TSR, um, the more errors you make, the lower the grade. All in all, I wish you all the best. In terms of the assessment criteria, do not fear. We will explain this in depth. And you will find a detailed criteria of the unit posted on the main page. Please refer to it. And if there are any further questions in terms of what to expect in the unit and what are your requirements, I would like you to review the unit page, um, uh, the main page with uh, diverse resources that may help you. Perhaps you already have a problem with punctuation marks and using commas effectively. It is not wrong to start with them and view the use of commas. There are many videos that you can find online that are effective. And in addition, we will also uh, represent uh, common punctuation errors, language, vocabulary, grammar errors, uh, writing errors, fragments, etc. throughout the unit to ensure that your writing is very effective and you can acquire these skills and establish them later on in different forms of writing.
all in all everyone i wish you the best that this be, this let this be a new beginning and a new start and i wish you all the best if you will have any further questions do not hesitate and contact me i will answer them accordingly